Hi, I'm Jackie Messenger, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a fireplace. Now, even if you've never made anything before in your life, don't let that stop you, because I'm not a carpenter, and I just went for it. So you get an idea, you just try, and you'll be amazed at the results. So I started by making a sketch. Now, the front part would be the hardest. I know I couldn't make this one solid piece, so I decided to have three separate pieces, and I would connect it together by a brace or a long piece of wood in the back, and I would just screw the corners together, and then I would just finish up the rest, connecting it by screws. I did have to use a drill for this project. If you don't have one yet, you can get a simple one at Walmart, a simple Black & Decker drill. This one you can plug in. I recommend the ones you can plug in because the cordless ones, they seem like they always die so quickly. And, but if you get the ones that you can plug in, then you can use it whenever you need it. Now this shows with the press board how it came out and then the elements that I plan to use. Okay, so I bought the press board from Home Depot. It was the finer grain, one step up from the cheapest one. And um, what's great about Home Depot is they'll make the cuts for you. So you have to measure it out really well, know how big your pieces are, and cut your, keep the pieces as long as possible because if it's too short, they can't cut it. On the top, I put a real piece of wood, it was pine, and I stained it. Now here you can see um, I'm starting to put on the brick. Now what I used was actually floor tile. Um, it's called Traffic Master Original. And inside each box there were 30 tiles, and this one was called Morocco Slate. Now if you just buy it per tile, um, it's a little over a dollar each, so it's really very reasonable. So on each one, each brick was three by six inches. So here I'm cutting it with a mat knife and a steel ruler on glass, and I'm just snapping it on the corner. Then you'll have to turn it around and cut one more time on the front to get it to release. Now the cool thing about these tiles is there's a, an adhesive on the back. So here I've been putting on the pattern, and I just started on one side, and I just went all the way across. And then on the second one, I went halfway and laid the brick and just had a smaller piece on the right hand side. The front part I'm going to be using a screen just from leftover pieces. So what I bought was a miter box um, and saw. It's only about $10 at Home Depot. And so you put the um, screen piece in. And this is already cut, but I'm just going to show you. Then you put the saw in. Just fit it into the groove and then you just saw it. Now it takes a couple minutes but it's really not that hard. You just got to be persistent. And that will cut um, a 45 degree angle. Now you need to cut four pieces of these and they will fit together like a square. Now in the corner it will match up and then you'll be putting a, um, an L an L piece clip, um, but I already used the clip so I can't show you it here. So you're going to clip the frames together and uh, then you're going to put the screen, overlap it about two inches, and then you're going to get spline, this cord, and it's going to fit in the groove and you're going to push it in with a tool called the spline tool. Um, it doesn't cost that much, a little over a dollar. And it looks like a pizza cutter and you just has a groove that the spline will fit into and you're just going to push it in. Now it's good to have a partner to be holding the screen so that it will be nice and smooth. Now I sprayed mine with um, black Rust-Oleum spray paint uh, and then I put the screen on second. After I was done placing the brick, I put a spackle paste um, in between uh, the grooves. Now, this is not the one I used. The one I used was red and it was light. Um, this one is, is heavy. So, this is again from Home Depot and it's like, I don't know, five dollars or so. So, um, it's, it's a light spackle and you're going to fill in the cracks with it. I just used my fingers and wiped with tissue to get the um, remaining off. And then after it dries, it holds it really well. The fireplace is um, actually Pretty, pretty cool.
is actually just like a single light one of those um, just single lights you can get sometimes at Christmas and then it's in um, kind of like a like a half of a toilet paper roll that is wrapped up in um, aluminum foil for reflection and and then this this is the cool piece that um, actually is powered by I guess a combination of the heat of the um, light bulb and wind and it's basically kind of like a thicker piece of aluminum and then each of the corners are just kind of twisted at a slight angle. It's placed on a paper clip that's bent like an L shape. And it just sits on there. And it just starts to spin. Sometimes I do have to open up the screen. So I just put a piece of removable um, stick them on the screen so I can just attach that up and take it off when I need to adjust it and it, the flame it really looks awesome and um, you know these are actual pieces of wood from somebody's tree that I found um, someone was cutting their tree and I just picked some pieces and it just looks really, really cool, especially at night. The piece on the bottom is just leftover pieces. So I just had like these um, small six pieces of wood and I, um, I think I actually just glued these pieces together onto a long skinny piece. And I made it kind of like, um, just kind of so it would hide that um, light behind and then I put the actual pieces of wood on the top. If I remember correctly the entire project cost about 50 to 60 dollars in materials. Um, the most expensive part was actually those two candelabras in the front. Um, I got those at Ross for like 18 dollars each. I got these candles from Walgreens they were about six dollars each and it's just actually battery operated with a switch on the bottom and um, you know it looks like a candle and it's just it's really cute I wrapped it with a little uh, ribbon and I put it at the top of the candelabra just for finishing touches and the other thing I did was on the inside I attached about six cup hooks so that I can hang stockings for Christmas um, and then I just put a fancy S clip on there so it's really fun to decorate. I can put hearts on for Valentine's Day or put cards up for birthdays or Christmas and again stockings for Christmas. It's a lot of fun to decorate the fireplace. I got this little switch thing at Christmas time to turn Christmas lights on and off and basically has a switch and this is plugged in on um, the other piece is plugged in to um, the single light bulb down there and it turns on my fireplace. Pretty cool, huh? I finished the top with white wall molding that I cut at a 45 degree angle and I just tacked it on there. This is one of the first fireplaces that I put together. It's very easy to do. They sell rolls that look like brick. You can tape that on your wall. And then if you don't mind putting screws in your wall, they have cup holding screws that is perfect for hanging stockings. And as you can see here, I just made a little poster that I put up there for the actual fireplace part. This shows a cardboard fireplace that we had once upon a time and that's where I got that spinning thing for the pretend fire. This is the first fireplace that I made with that tile brick and it was at our first home and I just stuck it to the wall and so that made it easier. I didn't have to make the, the frame of the fireplace. And then for the front I painted a little fireplace and put some lights. It's been a lot of fun to decorate for Christmas and for birthdays and with cards that the kids make or cards that we get it's a lot of fun. Now after I made this second fireplace and had to buy the lumber and everything 
Um, I couldn't help but notice pieces of wood that sometimes people would leave on the side of the street, old shelves and things like that. And so I made another fireplace out of completely recycled materials of things that people just left on the side of the road. It came out really well. Now for this fireplace, I did have to cut the pieces of wood myself. So I got a Black & Decker jigsaw from Home Depot for about $20. Very easy to use. You just want to make sure your fingers are out of the way. Hey Nov! What do you think? Awesome! Turned out great, right? <laughs> you want to say goodbye to YouTube? Wait, we'll wait. Way. Give me some thumbs up, thumbs up everybody for rock and roll. Ha 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 ha. Thumbs up everybody for rock and roll. Ha 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 ha. You will get the hang of it. I know it. You will get the hang of it. I know it. If you keep practicing, you will get better and better as you do it. Billy a firehouse. Awesome fireplace. Thanks. Fireplace firehouse is, is like the same. Okay, thanks, No. Bye. Give me some thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed this video of creativity, and even if you don't make a fireplace, I hope it will inspire you to be creative in your life. Take care. Here's some basic information you need to know about using a drill for the first time. Uh, you need to buy some drill bits, and they're not too expensive. Here's a little Black & Decker kit. And they come in different sizes, and basically it will decide about how big the hole will be. So this will be, create a big hole, and this one will be smaller. Now, the reason why we use uh, a drill is if you just try to crank this screw into a piece of wood, sometimes you'll, it'll just split it like that and that's what you want to avoid. So you make a starter hole that the screw can start to go in, ease in very well. Now you need to choose the right size bit. So if I use this bit right here, it's way too big for my screw, so my screw would just go in and out of that. So you need to choose a bit that when you hold it in front of your screw, that you can still see the screw behind, and that would be the perfect size, okay? Then after you choose it, you'll just screw it in there. Make sure that it's tight. And if it's going clockwise, that is the correct direction it's going to go. So say if I wanted to connect these two pieces together. So I just need to make sure that, you know, I'm gonna be keeping it in that distance over here. All right, so you could eyeball it. Or you could just draw a line. Okay, so now after you have your hole, you're going to take out your drill bit and switch it to the screwdriver. Now this one is a Phillips, that's the X one. So I'm going to put that in. Okay, now if you wanted to take the screw out, this trigger right here makes it go in the opposite direction. So that would make it go out. So for a first time project, using a drill, um, I would say it's fine, you know, as long as you're not a little kid. And um, it's, it's safe to use, you just need to be careful about the drill bit. Um, if you're drilling a hole that you don't want your hand underneath it, that you're going to be drilling through your fingers. And so just go slow, it, it actually goes through quite easy. And so yeah, if you can get something to cut your wood, that would be most ideal for your first project. And then after you're more comfortable, um, if you decide you want to use a jigsaw, that's a pretty um, nice transition. And again, you just got to make sure your hands are out of the way when you're cutting. Okay.